Nathan, and this is Juan Loco. And this is another episode of Stranger Things. Tune in next week for the better stuff. Actually, today we're going to be doing brisket. My favorite. Yeah. We'll hope that it's good. I haven't cooked a brisket in a while. I am, uh... It, every, it has all the potential of being really good. So, let's just, let's just hope for the best, right? So far, everyone's brisket I've ever tried has been really great. I've only had one bad experience where it was just a little too dry. Mm. And this one's a little bit skinnier, mm -hmm. uh, it, so it was it didn't have all the uh, ass end of like the fat side of it. So I'm hoping for the best, but also if it doesn't, I'm gonna be ghetto and just put baby rays on it. I believe in you. Yeah. yeah, I think it'll come out great. We're gonna try our best. We're gonna try our best. But why don't you tell everyone who doesn't know who you are what you do? Well, my name is Juan Loco. I am an adult performer in the adult industry, of course. I've been around for a, almost about six years, five if you don't include COVID 2020. But overall, I've seen a lot of crazy things. And as you guys know, Nathan does the same thing yeah. as I do. He's a male performer. And I'm pretty sure he's seen a lot more crazier shit than I have because he does a lot more advanced things than I do. And, <laughs> I don't know, bro. You have to do a lot of interesting stuff. Actually, here's the good one to start off on the question-wise. Because because of your size, because of how small you are, there is a lot of um, let's do that reverse dominate thing where the uh, the bigger the older woman is going to flip you upside down. How is that? Because I'm sure there's a lot of guys out there who would struggle with that. I know it's like there's a lot of things that we struggle with in the job we have to just fucking do. But how was that for you? What the fuck was that like? So at the beginning, I was all for it. You know, it didn't didn't bug me whatsoever. Um, and then it wasn't until like the second or third time I'm like, can I really keep up with myself being like being lifted up in the air? Because so it all started off when I was when I didn't learn how to swim. If I can't, what? yeah, I can't swim. Okay, yeah, no, I, I okay. Okay, yeah. So every time I'm in a pool, if I can't feel the bottom, I lose my shit. And oh. that, that's just me in every situation. If I don't feel the floor, I lose my shit. Mm -hmm. So overall, I've only done maybe a handful of those lift and carry scenes. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to put myself in that situation again because I want to give companies the best product they can get yeah. without you know having any difficulties with the male talent. Yeah. we As a male talent, we're trying very hard not to be difficult because most of the time the girls can do that plenty for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. And so, like, you've been doing it for six years. What are some, like, what are some of the struggles you found? Because you kind of, well, let's start over. You got in right out of high school, right? I was still in high school. Yeah, you are still in high school. Um, and how was that? Let's just talk about that for a second. What kind of ego did you fucking have in high school? Like, how long in high school did you have before you graduated? So, I was a super senior. So, therefore, I was already 18, and I was doing an extra couple months to catch up to get my high school diploma. And I was working at a retirement home. And I was like, man, fuck this, you know? Like, I, I want I want better things for myself. I want to get a car. I want to get my own place, et cetera, et cetera. I don't, I want to stop fucking old people. I want to fuck girls. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I wasn't really sexually active in high school. So, I mean, I was really picky choosy. But overall, um, as time went on in high school, it was spring break. And I got flown out to Florida. I told my teachers, hey, uh, I can't do my schoolwork. I'm going to be working out of state. I will be back at the end of the week. And they said, that's fine. So spring break's over. I'm coming back from Florida. And my principal meets me at 8 o'clock at the front door. She didn't let me into the building. And she immediately told me, Juan, you cannot be here anymore. Because I was in an alternative high school to where there was 18-year-olds and underage kids. And she felt like I was not suitable to be around those kids and i'm like dude what the hell are you talking about like i'm not some damn weirdo you know like yeah. i i keep to my own in the school anyway so i didn't really fight her about it she just handed me my paperwork and she sent me off to community college to continue from my high school diploma wait because so that was that the first time you went to to, to florida to go shoot yeah how did she know you did porn the first time well that's the thing everyone has a big mouth where I come from. Yeah. And no one knows how to keep their shit to themselves. Well, that's just people, yeah. Yeah, and so one kid found out, then another kid found out, then a class found out, and then it just went fucking shit. But it was a shit show after but that. But she didn't have any fucking proof, did she? Uh, yeah, because my videos were already releasing. After uh, a week? Yeah. God damn, they were editing fast back then. 
So, and that's what ended up happening. And I just, I was like, yeah, can't do this anymore. I never went back to school. Okay. So, not really winging it now. You know, I'm doing okay. So, <laughs> I'm doing okay. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good for myself. I'm not doing horrible. Whatever. <laughs> Well, that's fucking, yeah, dude, that's fucking wacky, man. I, c I can't even imagine the fucking ego you'd have as a fucking kid in high school, but, like, if you didn't really get to experience that because they kicked you the fuck out. Yeah. But overall, it was, I mean, I guess you can say it was a pretty crazy situation that... Don't worry about that. <laughs> by seconds, it doesn't matter. <laughs> that's nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. Where's I? Uh, I completely forgot what I was saying. Uh, because I was talking about how the ego you would have for being. Oh, I mean, I didn't really have such a high ego, you know. Like, I hate people with high egos because it's like, you can do good one day, but the next day it could be really fucking bad for you. Yeah. You know. So it's like, why, are you, why are you gonna over, over talk about yourself, and you know. Everyone goes through their things every day, so everyone has their ups and their downs. So, and I think especially in this job, you really learn that you can't be on top every day. Exactly. And maybe some people don't understand that because it's like it's like you'll never you can only be the biggest guy for so long. Mm -hmm. And it this job really shows you humility. And if you don't have humility from this job, I think it's what's the word I'm looking for? You're you're some kind of psychopath. <laughs> because dude, I mean we've all failed scenes. Yeah. And we know that pain of failing a scene. It, it, it sucks. It, it feels really down bad because then you feel that pressure from the directors and not yeah. only the directors, but the company they work for. Yeah. And it's really all up to them if they want to bring you back or not. Yeah. So that's why egos should be left at home when you are on set. Yes. hundred percent, man. It is <laughs> this job sucks sometimes. It really does. Honestly, people think it's all shits and giggles. We pull up and have sex. It's like, not at all. Not whatsoever. We show up. We do paperwork. Yeah. We sit around for a couple hours. And oh. then we barely get into the intro. Yep. Then three hours of sex, depending on how good you are. Yeah. And yeah, sometimes you could be there for four hours, eight hours. I've even heard some people being there for more than 12 hours. I, I know that if you're talking about like uh, some of the... Uh, the bigger movies, like they'll be twenty four hours, oh, and I'm like, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, man, I don't want to fucking be, dude. <laughs> dude, I don't want to do shit for twenty four hours, let alone having to get my dick hard. What do you think's the longest you've had to keep your dick hard, or have you tried to time it? Um, okay, so the longest I've had to keep my dick hard yeah. in one period of time, about two and a half, three hours. Yeah, th that's kind of where I was at because I did a VR scene and we were doing a thing where I was like, I keep a stopwatch on as soon as I did, my dick started going hard started it and would keep it going until I stopped and we did it. But I was also working with Coco Lovelock and so I don't get the fair assessment because we fucked through the whole thing when we're off camera, on camera. You know, it was one of those good days. So. <laughs> no, the longest I have to say I've been on set was, can I say company names? Or, yeah. yeah. So I was working for Gamma and it was a gangbang and there was like four or five other guys and two girls and we were there. I got there at eight in the morning. I didn't leave till one in the morning. <sighs> And it was a shit show. I had to drive from the valley up to Ventura County mm. at one in the morning. It was just so bad. Yeah, dude. And, I, and people want to be like, talk about like, oh, well, at least you get a fuck through. Dude, at a certain point when you're having sex with someone, or you have to be ready to have sex with someone, but you don't get to have that person's full attention. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not that fun. So especially doing gangbangs. It's like, if you're going to put me in a gangbang, I want to be in and out of there in like a couple hours. Yeah. Like, I don't want to do this shit for very long because I don't really want to be here. <laughs> you know, it's like, like that one gangbang we did with D. Williams, you know, I actually thought that was, ran a lot better than I thought it was going to go, dude. Yeah. And I was like, this is nice because we weren't there for more than like three or four hours. We did the paperwork and we got done, you know? Yeah, but, overall, that was a good day. I was yeah. a little tired that day. Well, dude, I mean, dude, we all have that yeah. day. So. But I mean, it wasn't my worst day no. ever. No. So... It, it was a good day, and I, I think that was one of the last times I saw our buddy, so. Oh, yeah, huh? Oh. forgot about that. Oh. Aw. <laughs> R.P. Jake, we loved him yeah. so much. He was a great guy. I miss that guy, man. Uh, that's a, that's a always regret. I never put him on the show because I was like, Jake's always going to be there, man. I put him on when I fuck ever, and I fucked that one up so bad. Ah, oh, well. Either way. Let's see. Definitely need seasoning for these, but I think I might do something different with that. Maybe some, uh, 
sesame seed oil. Give it a little bit of a smoky flavor. I saw you have uh, boxing equipment in the back. Oh, dude, I have everything, bro. I got parkour, I got archery, I got fucking uh, all the martial arts stuff. Um, like my roommate, he's a, a big martial artist. His kid's a big martial artist. Um, I've done martial arts on and off most of my life. Uh, as of lately, haven't done very much of many things. Mm -hmm. Fucking ripped right here um, at a parkour competition a couple months back. And so that's kind of been uh, making it so I can't do anything. It's unfortunate. But tonight we're doing Firebirds. Oh, really? Yeah, we're lighting people on fire in the background. Fuck, yes. Yeah. Oh, too bad I won't be here to see it. Yeah, but. <laughs> uh, I can show you a video after this because it's, it's really dope. And we're doing direct to skin, which means no clothes and just fires right there. Ooh, that's gonna be crazy. <laughs> it's gonna be neat. It's gonna be neat. But check it out. I just got into Muay Thai. I saw a picture, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which uh, what's the gym you go to? Uh, so I started at Andrada's uh, Muay Thai out in Las Vegas. Really great guy. Really affordable classes. If anyone's really into Muay Thai, I would check them out. But I have. I'm not a local of Nevada yet. So right now, I will be training at Poi Pu Muay Thai in Ventura County. Actually, I've heard though. So I'll be there until I leave California. Yeah. But for the most part, I mean, I've only done about two days, but yeah. I fell in love instantly on day one. I was like, I have to come back to this. Muay Thai is a lot of fun, dude. I very much enjoy it. Um, I've done, I did it like a year of Muay Thai and had a blast doing it. Just the problem was the one that I was going to was all the way on the other side of the valley. And that doesn't sound bad, but when you're here and you wake up, it's like 45 minutes to get there. It's like, Fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> and it gets become that. And the downside is it's a great jujitsu gym too. Like fucking solid place. Cool. There's nothing there. Um, yeah, there is. No, they're metal. Oh. Uh, but like there's sometimes where I put plastic things and then oh, I'm like, shit. oh fuck, fuck. <laughs> um they're great. It's called Legacy Legacy Gym. But uh the place is dope. It's a great spot. I wish you could go there more because they have great they have a uh, Bang Muay Thai, which is the one that Boss Rutten helped create or did create. Uh huh. And uh yeah, we just fucking love to do more of his stuff. Let's see. Yeah, my brother got me into it actually, but uh, he was showing me videos of this place out in Thailand. Oh, Tiger? Yeah, I believe so, where they just whip you when you get lazy mm -hmm. and you're feeling really unmotivated during practice, they'll whip you. And I'm like, dude, oh. these people are fucking savages. Oh, dude, the, dude, the Muay Thai guys, it's like some of the best fighting. Like, I mean, like, there's ju having Jiu Jitsu, wrestling background, everything, but Muay Thai is so good. Oh, so good. All right, guys, we're going to put a hold. I mean, you can keep talking. I just okay. have to get this uh, brisket. So, we got back. All righty. Yeah. Talk, tell them about yourself. So, overall, I'm a cool guy. Nick, Nick could tell you about that. <laughs> um, I am 23 years old. Uh, like I said, I've been in the industry for about almost six years. And um, I feel pretty good where I'm at in life so far. Um, I am married. Um, yeah. Um, oh, fuck. This is going to be a good one. I'm gonna get a shot inside of that before I wrap it up. I honestly can't wait for this. <laughs> so, how long have you been cooking for? Like overall, just like like in restaurants or yeah. like all together? Like, like uh, all together overall. I was in the restaurant business for about seven years, and I like started cooking when my mom went to a coma back when I was in tenth grade. Okay. Yeah, no, no worries. Um, but like, it was one of those things that like my parents weren't around that much, mm -hmm. so I just started fucking around. I started watching a lot of Anthony Bourdain, and um, so that's when I started uh, actually putting time into it. And then like, oh, this is cool. And then seeing Anthony Bourdain and like how he talked about food kind of inspired me to do it. And not only that, one of the probably best skills in my life that I've ever learned is cooking. Yeah. Um, there has never been a place. I've ever gone to where this isn't important, you know, because it doesn't matter who you are, everybody has to eat mm -hmm. and everybody can love things over food. And so that's the kind of nice thing about cooking is like, I've had people who hate me tell me they like my food. <laughs> so you fucking know you're good at it if that's the case, you know? And uh, that's kind of where like, like that, this show kind of came into play was I don't get to know people that I work with. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, you know, the girls, it's like, you go in there and you're like, hey, what's up? You know, just like trying to make that day nice so we can actually have a good scene, but you don't get to know who they are. Yeah. Some of these people don't give a fuck about like mm -hmm. knowing who they are. They're terrible people. I don't give a shit. But there's some people I do. I want to know who they are because I'm sure whatever opinion I have in my head about these people, they're, it's not like that. 
because again, you only get to know them for like a brief second of time. So this show gives me the opportunity to talk to you, people like you, get to see who they are, feed them, and if we ever did have problems, now you're eating the food, we're gonna squash that, because good or bad, we, you know, you're still getting free food. Yeah, and overall, so, Nathan and I never had a problem whatsoever. So what am I doing now? Potatoes, that's right. Boom. No, I remember the first time I, like, I didn't even know your lady was your lady until I worked with her that one time. She's like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, this is Oh shit! <laughs> It was the first time I ever heard of her. How long did your How long was your lady at before? Uh, like, is she about the same time as you? Or uh, so I came in in about t late 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, she came in at the beginning of 2018, and I ended up meeting her. She was a month and a half in, I believe, around that time. Okay. So she was she was fairly brand new, and I met her on a Team Skeet set. Uh, first go around. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Team Skeet. <laughs> Uh, first go around, you know, we, we were pretty cool with each other. We had really great conversations. And then second go around, it was just her and I. And we just connected right after that. And I got her number. And next thing you know, I'm hanging out with her. And I asked her, like, hey, you want to come to my place? And she never left, so. No, don't, don't play. <laughs> hey, you want to shoot content? <laughs> no, actually, at the time, I wasn't shooting content. I never really did content trades before. Oh, okay. So, I mean, I heard really great things about content trades, but I mean, I've never really gone down that road other than with my wife. So, gotcha, gotcha. but so far we're, we're doing good and yeah, we're been together for, don't laugh at me. Okay. <laughs> I get, I have numbers. I have, I have Take problems up. with numbers. Make it up for us. Uh, Make it up. She's not going to see this. <laughs> about four, four years. Nice. We've been together for about four years. No, it was four years. He knew. <laughs> But yeah, so so far we're doing good. Uh, we ended up having a kid too. <laughs> Yo, semen goes upstream. Good job, buddy. <laughs> it was strong. It was pretty strong. <laughs> so on on that same note, what are some of the difficulties you're finding being married to someone, dating someone in the porn industry? Uh, I mean, at the beginning, it was all jealousy from both sides. Yeah. So you know, it's something you really have to get used to. Uh, we still have our little jealousies. It's 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 gonna happen. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Um, and I think that's kind of the difficult part of porn, is trust. Yeah, trust is the really big thing. If you don't Puddles, have all the couches in the world and you sit on the fucking wall, <laughs> she's not cool. Without trust in a relationship, especially in porn, it's just yeah downhill from there. So, I mean, for the most part, our trust is. Pretty okay for the most part. I have really no complaints, but yeah, uh, there is a little bit more things to get used to throughout the time. Cause we are now, well, she's starting, I'm starting to let her go and shoot content. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> oh guys, by the way, the smoke is because this electric stove and there was oil, residual oil on top of the electricity. It's heating up, it's smoking. Uh, nothing's on fire. Sorry. <laughs> I hate electric stoves. I have one in my apartment. Dude, I, I don't hate electric stoves. And yeah, I hate gas too, but I would prefer a gas stove over an electric stove any day. 100%. Because I feel like my food will come out a lot better mm -hmm. if I had a fire grill. Yeah. So, I just feel better with yeah. fire, man. I feel like I can control it better. Mm -hmm. Temperature all, wise, yes. Yeah, it's all around better. Um, But with the content tray, man, it's like... One of the things I always have to remind my ladies, like, babe, I'm coming home to you every day. I need to shoot this because it makes me extra money. Yeah. Know? And it's like the same thing. And when it comes to, because I've heard there's some guys out there who are like, how many times do you make you come? Yeah. It's, it's like, like dude, bro, who gives a shit? Dude, who cares? She's still there with you. And not only that, sometimes, and you know this, strange is nice. Yeah. Getting some fucking pussy that's not yours because you don't have to listen to all that meh, 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 or her be like, Oh my God, why didn't you do this? And it's like, you don't have to listen to that. This is a fucking person you don't know. It's, you know, mm -hmm. don't have to worry about it. Yeah, and it's like people, it's kind of, to me, it's weird when male talent show up to set with a bouquet of flowers. It's so fucking it, weird. It's weird. It's like, dude, you're there to work. It's a business relationship. Yeah. You're not there to woo her. Yeah, like she's really has not. Your, has your girl got a fl flowers? Oh, dude, she'd come home with flowers. I'm like, what the fuck? is that she like pull up to the car I'm like what is that dude oh, what, what what's the what's the comp what's the fucking guy, group of guys who do that it's, um i forget the name of the the fuck. jesus christ that smoked this place out already 
<laughs> I don't mind smoke. I love smoke. Yeah, it works. <laughs> but flowers, flowers, you never want to... They're, they're just going to toss them away anyway. Trust me, believe me, I've tossed her fucking flowers away. I'm like, what, what do we need these for? Like, I get you flowers like once a week. Like, it, it's just weird that a male talent is bringing flowers yeah, or so, even gifts overall. You know what? You know what I find? This is something I used to do when I was brand new. Was I was trying to figure out a way to break that barrier and not be... I'm not just a new guy, right? Mm -hmm. And try to figure out a way to like, oh, hey, let's like have a conversation. I hit him up and be like, hey, you want coffee or Red Bull? That is... I'm not your coworker. I'm trying to bring you something. See, like if you want something nice, but it's not overly nice that we're trying to go on a date. Yeah, you know, it's not. It you're you're not exceeding that limit to where you're passing their comfortable space. You yeah. know, and I just feel like you know when people bring gifts, it just some girls get weirded out. Like they may seem like, oh okay, you know, thank you, but at the end of the day, they're just like, oh, it's fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, we got a question. Hmm. Sims Jeff would like to know. How do you plan on ha handling the time when your child knows or finds out about your dog works? Ah, uh, that he's is... He's going to grow a mustache, though, so he's not going to have to worry about it. <laughs> well, by the time she would probably be able to figure things out, we would be able to have a civil conversation about it to where we're like, hey, we're doing this, so you don't have to do it. We want to give you a lifestyle that you don't have to... How can I say this? We, we're, we're trying to give you a better life than what we had. Exactly. Exactly that. And, I mean, I can't say growing up was really bad for me overall. But it's, you know, I want to I want to put my kid in a better spot than what I was in the past. So, that's how I would go about it. And I've been asked this many times by performers, too. And I usually just tell them, like, hey, like, there's really not much you can do. It's on the internet. So. Yeah. Everyone's going to know. Yeah. I mean, the only one who hasn't really found out in my family is my grandmother because she's 89 years old and she doesn't have access to the fucking internet. So. She doesn't know how to use the Google. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, that's how I would go about it. You know, have a civil, nice conversation with the, with my kid. And, you know, that that's really only much I can say. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's like, it's, I understand, guys, no one really thinks 100% and when they get into job it's yeah. like i want to fuck that yeah or like i want to make money and so you probably weren't thinking about a kid when you were starting to do this but at the same time it's there you can't get rid of it exactly porn if you've done it is herpes it's there it's yeah. always going to be there for life know? it's there you, know? <laughs> you got it for life it's your friend that never moves <laughs> um and so it's like that's just something you have to deal with it's like yeah, what are you going to do? Yeah, when I came into this industry, I was 18 years old. I mean, dude, everyone, when you're 18 years old, it's like, girls, 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 girls. I never thought I was going to get into a relationship or anything like that. So, I mean, what did you think when you joined? Um, I wanted just to prove I could do it. Yeah. Uh, that, it was all. It was a little bit different for me because it was just trying to, like, I had girls back in the day. I was on a podcast telling the same story earlier, but I was like, I was, on a, uh, I was in relations. They had that small dick and I was terrible in bed. And so I was like, Fuck you! I'll prove you wrong, <laughs> and uh, so I try to become the best at that. <laughs> For me, I just wanted the better things in life, and I was like, "Hey, I don't want to sell drugs, so I guess porn it is." Mm. So, and then throughout the time at the beginning, I told my dad, "Hey," because I didn't have the best credit at the time. I told my dad, "Hey, want to help me get a car?" Mm. And I show up to the dealership with a couple grand, and then my dad he saw me fill out the paperwork for the bank, and he's like. How the fuck do you make this much money? He's like, you make more than me, and I'm a, I, I'm a plumber. Plumbers make great money. Oh, and yeah. I know, and I'm like, I've only been in for a couple months, you know, like. But he's like, well, what the fuck do you do? And I never told him at the time. I told him, I, was, and I told him, I was like, I do photography, and he's like, you don't make that much off photography. You're selling drugs. I'm like, all right, we'll just go with that. And then one time, I was giving my dad a ride. He's like, all right, what the fuck do you really do? And first thing I did, I was like, hold on. I pulled up a picture of a Bella Danger. And I, I showed him and I was like, I'm fucking women like that. That's what I'm doing. And he's like, oh, okay. Uh, I'm not that mad. <laughs> I want to say something to that. Just but like, I don't want, I doubt you watching the show. <laughs> I, I fuck women like that. What, a bag of cunt? <laughs> 
kind of mean. <laughs> uh, I've never had a bad experience with her. She's always been really sweet to me. But I mean, then again, someone's not going to be their complete selves on set. They're not going to show that inner person, you know? Even though you mess up, if someone's really straightforward with you, they're yeah. going to be really straightforward with you if you do the wrong move. 100%. And that's why I always try to be really respectful when female talent asks me, like, hey, do you want help, this and that? And I'm like... Uh, I mean, let, let me try. Give me a couple minutes. Mm. And if I do need help, I'll take it. If I don't need the help, then, yeah. you know, we're good. But I never try to exceed a talent's limits. I always try to make the other talent feel as comfortable as they can. Because I never want to end up on someone's no list. Yeah. And yes, no lists do exist. We're not forced to have sex with the people we are put together with. Nope. So if you don't want to work with someone... You don't have to. Yeah. Nothing's forced in the adult industry. Unless you have one of those fucking creepy directors. I'm not going to say names because there are a few out there that oh, like yeah. to fuck girls without consent. And it's fucked up. Yeah. Especially all the new girls. All the new girls who are watching this, you don't have to do anything off camera that you don't want to do. Especially on camera too. You don't have to do everything you don't want to do. Yeah, guys, it's okay to say no. Yeah. Uh, no, no exists in the industry. It's okay <laughs> to say no. It's okay to say stop. Uh, like here's an example. I like like it's always fun for me if the girl wants to fuck in between the scene. Just makes it fun. Makes the day go easier. Whatever. If your pussy's sore, if you don't want to, you just tell me. Don't sit there and take it. Exactly. Because now I feel like a fucking asshole because I thought you were into it, yep. and then all of a sudden like this hurts. I'm like, bitch, tell me an hour ago. I would have <laughs> done it. And I believe another problem we have in this industry. Mm -hmm. And it's not all girls. I want to say it's about 20% of the female talent. And it's also men, too. Men also have this kind of problem, too, yeah. when they're new in the industry. Hygiene. <laughs> Hygiene is the number one thing on my list that has to be done. Because yeah. I am, ever since COVID, I lost my moment. I took a whole year off for COVID. And I was only doing content with my wife in that between time. And I kind of lost a lot of interest in the gross shit I used to like. And now that I'm back... I don't really like to eat pussy. I don't really like to lick ass. I'm really picky choosy on who I go down with on the industry because like I've had a really lot of bad experiences. Of, wow, that's really sour. Yeah, I've like just recently, dude, I shot a scene. I'm not gonna say companies or names on this one because it, it's Probably pretty, best. yeah, it's pretty fucked up. Um, I've seen shit like cottage cheese come out of a vagina and it is really fucking sickening. And if I get a lot of hate for saying this, oh well. It's, you know, it's required to have good hygiene in this industry. If you're not showering at home before coming to set, shower when you get to set. There are towels and body wash provided for you on set. If not, you could bring your own too. It's not that hard. It's true. <laughs> it's okay to be cleanly. Cleanliness. And is close to godliness. Some some male talent like it, but I could tell you now, a majority don't. Yeah. What stinky ass pussy and armpits, all that shit. Oh yeah, dude. It's like okay, I want I want to put some other. A hundred percent. As a woman, you do whatever you want. I respect your decision. Having said that, I got hit up to do a scene the other day where it's all about worshiping the girl's hairy armpit and licking it, and I was just like this. I'm not into that at all. Yeah. And like, I'll do it. I'll fucking do the scene. But I'm like, why'd you give that to me? There's guys out there that like that mm -hmm. shit. It's like that's like a very niche thing, and that was for fucking my niche. Oh shit, for real? Yeah, it got canceled, but like, I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is this, dude? Like, I did, haven't done that stuff since I did fetish work. What are we doing here, bro? <laughs> and this is like, overall, like, us male talent, we get put in some pretty hairy cool. scenarios. <laughs> questionable, <laughs> questionable scenarios, too. It's like, I really want to do this. And yeah, sometimes we get provided a script beforehand so we could go over it and see what we're comfortable with and not comfortable with. Like yesterday. I got to fuck some mashed potatoes. That was fucking great. That was pretty cool. I mean, I fucked pies. I, now I fucked mashed potatoes. It was pretty cool. Stuff like that. It's not, I mean, it's weird, but it's fucking hilarious, it's you know? It's definitely hilarious. And I would do that any day, but being picked up off the ground, um, fuck, what else was weird that I've done that I didn't want to do? Grandma? Grandma? No, that wasn't that bad. Sally D'Angelo was really great to me. I, I've, I've done two of those where I'm like, one was horrible, one was fine. And the one that was horrible, I have to do again because I don't remember. 
Not my fault, though. Mm. <laughs> oh, here's a question about the food thing, because I've uh, had to do a couple of those, and I don't think people quite understand uh, when they get to watch these little commercials of us fucking something. Mm-hmm. So, guys, when it's a pie or a cake, and we have to stay hard, understand that cake don't squeeze back Mm-mm. at all. So we're trying to fuck this thing and stay hard through multiple takes. That's pull it out, clean it off, jerk it off, get it back there, put it back in, hope that everything's done in time so we can actually get to fucking because, oh, and also take a shower after that because we can't put that inside the girl because she can get a yeast infection. <laughs> you know? uh, but pumpkin pie, not so good to fuck. Apple pie, like an American pie? Fuck, Jimmy, you were great on that one. <laughs> you weren't wrong on it either. <laughs> See, I had a, I had just a regular, like, sugar pie. I did it for New Biles, right? Mm-hmm. And I remember they got this from Ralph's. The sugar was grainy. It was terrible. And then I tried jerking off with it, and it was just such gnarly grains. It was, like, grabbing my dick. And so I put a hole in it, and I just put my dick in there. And then they kept going back and forth with, like, moving the girls around as soon as I get my dick in there. And now we're taking forever. <laughs> and so my dick goes down, and the girl grabs it, and like, well, why is it not hard? I'm like, because it... It's not a fucking pussy, dude. <laughs> and I'm like, because you guys pick stupid things. I'm doing this. I'm shoving my cock into a cake, man. <laughs> and the cool thing about this job, you don't have a stunt man. You are always your own stunt man. Yeah. And it's sometimes it's pretty painful and sometimes it's really fun. Yeah. I mean, yesterday I had to fall off a skateboard and they told me, wow, you're really fucking committed. And I'm like, well, you want it to look good, right? So, <laughs> and then sliding on squirt, they told me, you're really committed. I'm like, it has to look good. It has to look real, right? It's going to be an ad. <laughs> so, yeah, so being your own stuntman is pretty fun. Yeah. And for me, not being able to swim, and the company already knows, and I already told them, I would only jump into a swimming pool for that company because I love them that much. Yeah. And as Brazzers, I told them, I hate pools. I can't swim. But for you guys... I would jump in any pool any day. <laughs> so, if you're the only company I would like, I do something I really don't like. Oh, there's a handful. I do a lot of things. Shut up. Um, but, like, yeah, like, dude, one of my favorite companies is probably Cherry Pips. I just like working for them. They're easy to do. It's always easy, quick, no problem. Fucking love that, man. I've never shot with them before. No, dude, mm-hmm. their live shows are great, man. It's like, I get, it's three o'clock to six mm. every day. But see, that's the thing. Like when it comes to live shows, I it's not about like me thinking I'm gonna do bad, but it's you know some people can't stay hard for three hours straight, and oh, that's no. just not me. I don't want. Oh no no no! It's only forty five minutes. Oh really? Yeah, because it's three hours. Like because you get there, they do paperwork, oh, but that's okay, the amount of time okay. you're there. Yeah, you get there, uh, you take pictures, do sex stills, and then you're in there. What uh, I think it's sixty minutes. So the first ten minutes, you're sitting there with a girl. She's completely clothed. Next 10 minutes, you leave. She's there by herself doing stuff. Then you come in for the last 40 minutes. And you just bang, do whatever until the last five minutes when you come. So it's all put down, but you have to wear a condom. Ugh. And that's the thing. I, I hate condoms. I get that. But for some reason, I'm good at that. I've, all, I've never failed a scene there. It's just always been the one. And like, if you get me a girl that I like, it's like my easy scenes. Because mm-hmm. I just could go in there and be like, oh, I'm ruining that pussy today. <laughs> I get a bed. I get a fuck you. They follow me around. I get fuck. We're <laughs> I'm running that pussy ragged here. And see, it's like, I know myself. Everyone always knows themselves in the industry, what you can and cannot do. And I just don't like putting my situ- myself in a situation I wouldn't tr- trust myself in. Yeah. And live shows is one of those things. I don't want to screw it up. I don't want to fucking beat my dick soft for like 40, for like 20 minutes, you know, no. on camera. So it's just something I don't have trust in myself. In no, it's, it's it's not. It's, I, I got into it. Because it, they gave me a chance, and I just saw what it was. If I had to do it a different way, and like see that, like through your eyes, a totally different man. So, but like again, I like it might be different for me going to work for Brazzer because I never worked for them, so it could be different in that sense. So Sage Lee Three says, "I'm I'm hearing a porn idea of teaching Juan to swim." See, that's the thing. My wife wants to teach me to swim and she's always telling me come to the pool let's go to the pool you don't even have to get in and i'm like yeah but i'm gonna get there and you're gonna be like come on get in the pool stop being a bitch and i'm like no like i um. can see her saying that <laughs> she's like stop being a bitch yeah, fucking do it, pussy. <laughs> but overall i just have a fear of water and it all started when i was five i thought it was tough shit going into the pool and i was jumping into a nine foot pool and next thing you know i'm just dropping straight to the bottom and 
to top it off, I had floaties. And I still drowned. But, and then next thing you know, they're like, well, where did he go? And then they're all looking in the pool and they're like, oh shit, none of us know how to swim either. <laughs> Who's gonna get this kid out? I was like, fuck. <laughs> well, I'm gonna throw this in the smoker while I still got some going. Okay. Right back. Ah. Well, yeah. Uh, a scene to where it's to teach me how to swim, I don't think it would go pretty good. Uh, yeah, so maybe I probably would do it out there. Like I said, I would jump in a pool for a company, but swim around, I would have to be in the four feet or less area to be really comfortable to do a pool scene like that. But who knows? Maybe one day I will have the balls to actually try to swim. <laughs> you said almost six years you've been doing it? Uh, for about six years, yes. And honestly, I, I feel old. People tell me, oh, you're 23. You're, you still have a long ways to go. And it's like, no, dude, when you have a kid, it, it age, it, I feel like it aged me a lot within the time that my, my kid has been around. So I'm 23. I got knees popping, my back popping. Sometimes I take my time to sit down. Like it, this job is really work. It works your body out from a majority of the time. It definitely does something to your body that I didn't think. Like, and I'm a pretty youthful person, man. Mm -hmm. But it tears you down a little mentally and physically. Like the girls, and I know this is gonna be funny. Their knees are all shot. <laughs> Which is funny because they're on their knees, so, eh, but like it's real, dude. They're fucking their knees are hurting. Like when they're not on camera to get mm -hmm. down there, like yeah, like dude, because a lot of the things they have us do on camera, we don't do in our personal life. Yeah, like reverse cowgirl, up and over. Yeah, up and over. Oh, I do the up and over. That shit's fun. I love that shit. Um, <laughs> I done it my personal life. Too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the lift and carry shit. Like who does that? Like I, I get it, dude. People love seeing it. But overall, we don't do stuff like that in our personal life. I do that at swinger parties. <laughs> if, I, if I go to a thing where there's multiple people, I'm like, hey, watch this. Ah, what's up? Well, I mean, and when, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> I mean, when it comes to a guy lifting a girl, that's a whole different thing. Because, yeah. I mean, girls love it. Because, I mean, you don't really have to do much anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, when a guy gets lifted by a female and you have to keep your shit hard for about five, ten minutes... Imagine your blood flowing in the opposite direction. That's yeah. just how you feel. You get really congested in the head and you feel the biggest pressure in your forehead, especially for the talent who takes the Alex and Viagra. Yep. They know exactly what I'm talking about because they get that feeling before they even have to go through sex. And it's horrible. But hey, it's what we it's what we do for our job. So yep. Yep. <laughs> Um What was I gonna say? Shit. Lost it. God damn it! Fuck! <laughs> I have a question for you. So, have you ever had a shitty day on set? And yeah. by shit, I shit mean boo? shit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've had. Uh, well, I was talking about this one earlier today because uh, this chick was asking about weird stories. Um, back when, uh, like, one of Jake's first Fourth of July parties, uh, we all got everyone was there. We, everyone got wasted, and I had to do a scene. I'm not gonna say the girl's name. But did a scene with a girl that was there the night before. She didn't look like she was that bad. I was still fucking drunk there, going to that the, the fucking work, still a little drunk. I get in there and there was an anal scene. I, I did great, but every time we just went in, pulled out, and just green goo came uh. back out with it. And this is the way I'm gonna describe it. First time I saw it, I'm in. I see a little bit there, and so I'm about to pull it out and kind of wipe off my dick because I want to keep the scene going. I don't want to make her feel bad. I pull out. This bitch jumps up, takes my dick, and starts sucking it, dude. And I was just like this. Uh, two things. One, <coughs> completely grossed out. But also, kind of turned on because of the commitment this girl had, man. I was like, oh. Uh, don't kiss me, but I'm, I'm kind of hard right now. I don't know why. If that was me, I would immediately yell cut. And for that cottage cheese situation I was putting not that long ago, I did the same shit. She did the same shit. She hopped off and the other two talent looked at we all looked at each other and we're all like, like, what the fuck? And then she starts fucking sucking and then the, yeah. we just kept looking at each other like like what the fuck? On what? camera. So I mean when the scene comes out, you guys know you you guys will see my face on camera. I'm like, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, it's you guys um, will know. 
<laughs> it's it's real interesting. Like some of these girls, like they'll, they'll just go hard no matter what. But I, I remember one time I was uh, I was working with a girl and I was eating her out, and I was like, that tastes weird. Usually I love eating pussy, and the guy knows I love eating pussy. But I kind of went out because it's like what five seconds into that part, and I'm like, I'm just gonna start playing with the hand. And I'm fingering her, and my fingers are coming out with like white and brown stuff on it, and I'm like, huh. So I'm just kind of like doing this with the clit now and like <laughs> and then like we start fucking it's like it's like old blood and crusty white shit and i don't I, you may know this feel this way too i'd much rather have my dick in something like that than my fucking mouth yeah, yeah. which is both disgusting but like i it's like one thing i don't have to taste you know mm -hmm. and one's far enough away from me where i can just i'm like i'm gonna bleach you later <laughs> They're like, ah, I'm gonna have rigs on speed dial. Yeah, I'm, I'm calling someone up after this, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. So, like, what? How? When you you first got in, how many scenes did you get before you ended up doing a bad one? Um, because you had to have done a good amount of good ones. Yes, I did. Actually, before like something bad happened. So for the first like five months in the industry, I rocked it out without any Viagra, Cialis, because you know I was I was really fucking horny at the yeah. time. I was 18, 18, 19, you know. And then around the sixth scene, the female talent, she was actually really prude, and everyone in the industry knows who I'm talking about. I'm not gonna say names, but the prudest and racist and most asshole talent ever. Oh, I think I know. Is she religious too? Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know her like that, but I'm gonna say she has a little 5 a.m. shadow going on up here. So. Uh, um, but yeah, she told me, "Oh, you're really unprofessional. You can't keep your dick hard." And I'm like, "Not really helping the situation, being an asshole." And then you know, I <laughs> and it's like I don't want to be here either. <laughs> yeah. And then check this out, pop. I shower. I leave. I mind. I get my check and I mind my own fucking business. And then the director calls me and she's like, hey, Juan, um, I know you didn't do anything wrong or anything like that, but can you pull over and check your bag and see if you have her car keys? And I am like, I'm on the 101 right now. And um, yeah, let me pull over real quick. I'm start searching my bag and I'm like, nope, no keys. And you could hear the lady in the background. No, that motherfucker has my keys. That fucking Mexican. This, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, like, you know, you're, you're a fucking cunt. I'm like, why are you saying shit like that? Like, it's fucked up. <laughs> you fuck, he's a fucking Mexican. Hey, we can't say that anymore. <laughs> yeah, like, and I've heard so many bad things about this person, but uh, from what I, older lady? Uh, she's like in her 40s. Blonde? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot. <laughs> she's a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> but yeah so that was a pretty shitty situation for me at the beginning that was about like five months in and for her to call me unprofessional was uncalled for i was pretty brand new i'm still trying to figure things out you know yeah. like it's here's, fucked up here's another question from stage leap three uh do you get grossed out more easily or less after doing porn aka has your tolerance for gross stuff gotten better or worse since you started in the industry uh, so at the beginning, I was really fucking vanilla. I never liked to eat ass. I never really liked going down on women. And then, like, throughout the time, I was like, okay, you know, I'll eat some ass. It's not that bad now to me. And then throughout the time, I started doing, like, not gross. I don't want to say gross shit, but it's more of, like, getting used to certain smells. and Because everybody has their own body scent. And it's just the fact that getting used to that body scent is kind of not tough but it's just something you're not used to you know yeah. so i mean to me it's not gross to eat vagina and ass i just it, i'm very particular on who i go down on if i've worked up with that person multiple times yeah i'm you know most definitely i'm gonna go down on that person but if it's my first go around with this person and i feel like you know um, i don't yeah. feel comfortable going down there then i'm not gonna go down there i like how you said though eat vagina it's very, very fatherly of you. <laughs> I like to eat the puss. Uh, I think for me, it's a completely different scenario where it's... I've seen dirty stuff, and I know it's dirty, and the things I, I, I've i definitely had times where I'm like, no, ew, get away from me. But it's all person to person. Because if you get me horny enough, there's not a damn thing I won't do. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't 
there's a handful of girls who spit in my mouth, and I'm like, Bleh. then there's that one girl who's like, who gets your fucking blood to here, and I'm like, you're fucking drooling, I'm gonna fuck. <laughs> You shit my mouth right now and I fucking eat it. Like, uh, ah. I, that's going a little too far. I want to do that. Uh, but, like, then again, I mean, I have drinking Pedialyte out of a girl's pussy. Uh, I mean, because yeah. she just drank a lot of Pedialyte, so she pissed in my fucking mouth. Um, not the best day, but also Pedialyte just tastes like salty Pedialyte yeah. when it comes out of a pussy. Yeah. So, I mean, like, stuff like squirt. I mean, anal days are not that bad. It's something I'm... I, I, I mean, I can't say I enjoy having butt sex with the females and stuff like that, but, I mean... It, like when say for example no one really knows when they're fully cleaned out yeah. so when you can do your best like, yeah, yeah you could do your best we're not, we're not gonna get mad about it we're just gonna let you know like hey you know like this is going on uh let's cut and let's okay. pick up where we left off and it, at the end of the day it's all about not trying to hurt the other person's feelings because yeah. we're there to do a job and yeah it just i always just try to be as respectful and professional as i can to let the other person know, like, hey, this is going on. Um, let, let's just take, let's take care of it real quick. Yeah, and that, that's the thing. It's like there has to be some sense of professionalism, especially when it's like, when it comes to hygiene. It's mm -hmm. like, I need to feel comfortable enough where I'm be like, hey, shit stinks. Can you go? Can you go? And yeah, it's gonna hurt. Yeah. But at the same time, you need to take care of that because it's not great. You know? Yeah, and it's but like same thing goes. I'm gonna say because I know there's some girls that they're like, well, what about the guys? You know what? Every guy should know his limit when his dick isn't working for three hours and shouldn't be making the girl suck it for that long. Yeah. It shouldn't take you more than a minute to get hard. So not even it shouldn't even take you more than a minute. It, it should, should like but you know what? I'm gonna give you the I'm gonna give you the chance and say that sometimes five, six minutes. But when you go past the five, six minute mark, like you shouldn't be training a blowjob for an hour. Yeah. You know? And overall this job, it's a really big mental game. Yeah. It, it's crazy. Some people can't do it. Some people can. You know, at the beginning, it, I just sort of popped off, you know. It was like whatever to me. And someday, now that I've been around a little bit longer, you know, I still, I, I have some bad days to where I'm like, hey, you know, new crew. Oh, I don't, new crews are always a problem. Yeah. New crew. Let's see how it goes. And I just got to put myself in the best mindset as I can, you know. Like, sometimes when I do, when I am in a bad situation, I like to think about my wife, you know. Like, that, that really helps the situation nice. so i mean for the most part yeah it's all a mental game if you're not mentally prepared for the job then don't do the job great mm. oh that smells so good <laughs> you ever tried eyeball tacos uh what's national league well um no no i would if i had the chance but most of the time it's a. Uh, have the chance there's this place up in santa barbara it's called lily's tacos oh yeah no i know i, I yeah i know what you're about. yeah yeah i uh because every time i went there they're fucking carne asada ones are so fucking good i mm -hmm. never got went there no they have everything they have cabeza lengua oh yeah, they, they have a lot of good food man. and so when i was like about nine ten years old my dad always told me like hey i'll give you ten dollars if you try these eyeball tacos and i was always so fucking gross i was like no that's nasty no, i don't want to do that shit i'm gonna, I'm gonna go poop and the eyeball's gonna be looking at me <laughs> and then, you know, I was about 10 years old. I was like, you know what? All right, I'll do it. He, gave, he got me two tacos. And he's like, if you eat both of them, I'll give you 10 bucks. First bite. Uh, I was like, this tastes like carnitas, but with fat in it. Like a lot yeah. more fat in it. And so then ever since then, that's all I get now is eyeball tacos. And the wife hates it. The in-laws hate it. They're like, ew, like, you like the eyeballs? I tried tricking the, my mother-in-law to eat eyeball tacos and then she read the receipt and she googled and she's like i'm not fucking touching those that's sick and i'm like okay you sick. know i'm not mad about it you know <laughs> but overall i don't i mean yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah. Fun. Fun. Mm, and i love that it's sweet too yeah but i mean tripas it's really good just depending on how it's prepared but I, Ojo Tacos will always have a place in my heart. It's so good. Um, did you grow up wanting to be in porn? Is that just like, did you watch a lot of porn? I watched a shit ton of porn. I had my phone taken away at 13 because my dad found my porn stash on my phone. Uh, <laughs> um, but I never aspired to be in porn growing up. 
um, I always had like the biggest fucking boner for Asa Akira. Yeah, and oh. I ran into her. I never shook hands. I never said hi. But my fucking jaw dropped at AVN. When I saw her, I was like... And the wife was like... At the time, she wasn't my wife. And she was like, go say hi to her. And I'm like, no, there's too many people. I was just like, you know, had the biggest, shyest moment. So, yeah, growing up, I watched a lot of Asa Akira. Um, oh, and no, another one, Piper Perry, too. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, I never thought... I never got I to work... Still in? No, I, I don't want to really comment on that. I had a conversation about that not long ago with someone. But, yeah, she, she doesn't perform anymore. Yeah. Um, But... Yeah, I I never got the chance to work with either of them because mm -hmm. I you know I came in a little too late where the both had retired, but those were my two biggest favorites mm -hmm. overall. But I like I said, I never really aspired to be in the industry growing up. Yeah, it just sort of you know it, it, hey, it, it, it just I it, it happened you know. Yeah. Bang Bro said we love your image, we'll fly you out, and that's how it all started. That's cool, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, sometimes there's laggy parts in the show. Uh, it's why it was uh, back when we were drinking all the time on the show. It was really nice because in between you'd be like, cheers, put it back. Yeah. But because we're doing fire tonight, I can't drink. So. No, nope, gotta be sober for some things you gotta do in life. So. Yeah, weak. Um, <laughs> Um, what is like some of the lessons you may have learned, like something you didn't know about yourself before you got in porn, and now you're like, yeah, that's the kind of person I am, you know? Like, I may have found out that I'm a bigger freak than I even thought I was, or I'm, a, what, like, if the amount of people in this job are the rest of the world, I'm way harder working and way more professional. I want to say I found a lot more commitment to myself trying to do certain things. Uh -huh. So that's where I really found myself in the industry is like trying to commit to certain things I've never tried before. Gotcha. And I'm always open to try, well, not a lot of new things, but like, hmm, I don't know. Like I said, like stuff I didn't like before, I ended up liking when I got into the industry. Like rimming, I never really tried rimming, like being rimmed. Yeah. And then my first go around was an orgy. Mm. And I was like, Oh, fuck it, you know? The worst that could happen is I didn't like it. That's yeah. it. So, guys, hygiene. Yeah, hygiene. We don't wipe our ass nearly as good as the girls do. Clean your ass before doing that. And a lot of girls don't like hairy ass, so shave your fucking ass, too, because yeah. that, that's that's fucking sick. <laughs> what was that uh, that quote from a comedian? It's like, that's, that's, a, uh, that's a jungle you don't want to go down, Cortez. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got another question from uh, Sims Jeff. Uh, do you get recognized in everyday life and does it surprise you? Mm. Oh, matter of fact, yes. I get I get recognized a lot. And it's usually at hotels and um, usually in the Las Vegas Strip. Those are the two biggest places where I get really noticed at. And in the area I live in, I don't get recognized, thank God, because I don't want fucking people knowing who I am. Except this one awesome neighbor. He's really great. I give him gear and all that shit when I get a chance, when I have extra stuff to give out. And he's a really great guy. Um, but other than that, I do get recognized in public a lot. And it's really annoying when I am with the wife and kid. They're like, oh, you're so-and-so, right? And I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm grocery shopping, you know? I'm, I'm trying to have a good time with the fam. I'm not with the fam overall. I have my kid around. Please don't ask me about my job when my kid's around. Please. Yeah. That's the one thing we ask. If we are with family and kids, don't bug us, please, because we like to be respected on our own time. Uh, like, say, for example, Leonardo DiCaprio. He's having dinner. You're not going to go up to him and be like, hey, can we take a picture? Selfie. Yeah, like, dude, we, we like to be respected on our own time. And, you know, some days we'd be like, hey, yeah, you know, let's take a picture. No, no issue whatsoever, you know? But other than that, like, yeah, I remember one time I was actually rolling a blunt on the Las Vegas Strip and it was me, the wife, and a few of my buddies. And I'm already a little tipsy and I'm sitting in front of the Flamingo rolling a blunt and these kids come up to me. They're, they're all 18. I say kids because they're all younger than me. Um, and they're like, oh shit, you're Juan Loco. And my friend's like, hey, hey, back up, back up. And they're like, come on, we just want to get a picture. I'm like, I finished rolling the blunt first. And so they're waiting about a couple minutes till I finish. And 
They were like, oh, we want to take a picture. Can we take a picture? And my friend's like, hey, it's going to be 10 bucks. <laughs> he straight fucking finessed these kids for 10 bucks to take a picture with me. And they're like, hey, can we smoke the blunt with you? And I'm like, no. Like, what the fuck? You guys asked for a picture. Like, get gone, dude. This, this is my time now. Like, you got your picture. My friend got his $10. I, I didn't end up keeping the $10. I was like, hey, you fucking finessed that one. That's all you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bodyguard. But it being recognized is a quite often thing and it doesn't also help that i like to wear a lot of brazzers gear yeah you kind of do bro yeah i love brazzers like fucking gear. Airport. <laughs> <laughs> i get people asking me like hey like sometimes people don't even like hey are you one local they're just like dude sweet bag and i'm like oh yeah my, my my mom gave it to me for christmas i don't know what the fuck it means but it's hey. like you're, you're wearing all brazzer gear <laughs> at the one airport every porn person flies out of to a point where it's like like everyone goes. If you're going to Vegas, you're going to you're going to Arizona, you're going anywhere. Usually, all porn people are going out of one central airport. Mm -hmm. And so, when I have to walk down there, I either have to look for Brazzer gear or just faces because we can all see each other's faces now. Mm -hmm. And that's the one common thing to find someone in the airport is if they're usually wearing Brazzer's gear. Yeah. And yeah, so it doesn't help because sometimes I even get recognized by TSA agents. They're like, "Hey, you were here last week, Con." I'm like. Ask me again. I'm here every week. Yeah. <laughs> and then another thing too, it's funny that TSA and if TSA ever, anybody who is working in TSA is watching this, TSA loves me so much. Their body scanners always pinpoint me in the morning and the evening in my groin area. And it is the funniest fucking thing ever when people are passing by you and your fucking dick is lighting up on the screen and they have to pat you down and the funniest comment I've ever done to someone was in a Las Vegas airport mm -hmm. and they were searching me, they were patting me down. I looked back behind me, I'm looking at the guy and he's just staring at me and I'm like, hey, he's trying to touch my schlong and TSA agent looks up at me and he's like, what did you say? And I'm like, oh, nothing, continue what you're doing, dude. <laughs> but about 90% of the times when there's a body scanner in an airport, I'm going to get stopped because my dick Is pops up. Metal? <laughs> I want to say it's all from Cialis, you know? Like, all the Cialis is just, like, point pointing it out. There's metal in Cialis? I don't know. I think it's just the blood, you know? But, yeah, it happens quite often. And I'm always grateful for the times it doesn't happen because I hate being patted down. I always feel like I'm going to be arrested. And, yeah. Yeah, I, I hate it. Do you I, ever get patted down by TSA? Uh, every once in a while, then I like to make noises. Uh, so they pat me down, I'm like... <laughs> oh, yeah, right there. Yeah. Oh, just like that. Yeah, daddy. <laughs> yeah, I'll do stuff like that. Uh, because it just depends on my mood, but there's sometimes I'd like to fuck with everyone. So. The one thing I love doing is walking through TSA with female talent. Because they always have fucking dildos in their carry-on. Yeah. And they always get pulled in the secondary. And they're like, hey, I have this and that. And we still have to check this and that. And they open it up immediately so first thing they see double-sided fucking huge dil dildo and they just close it zip in hand and they're just like okay you be on your way you know have a nice day well you don't want to touch <laughs> it come on touch it i remember one time it was me and Paige Owens. we were just going through tsa and they opened the bag there's six fucking dildos in her bag she's like i'm not even embarrassed and <laughs> it's like hey do you even need that many dildos for the fucking scene <laughs> Oh, fuck, but yeah. Do you, do you, I mean, I remember last time over, and no, you, I don't think you were with me. It was me and Skylar Snow, and we were going to TSA. TSA is just everyone down the line asking questions about my stuff, and she's like, hey, Juan. You, you no, get, I, was, I was there. You were? Uh, yeah, because remember we all went to the bar. Yeah. Oh, well, you got there after. Yeah, that's true. And she was like, Juan, it doesn't help you work Brazzers gear to the airport. Everyone's going to know who the fuck you are. And I'm like... Oh, it's whatever. Yeah. It is what it is. <laughs> at, at it's like at this point, it's like, yeah, we get recognized. It's really whatever at this point. Sometimes it's annoying. Sometimes it's not. It's just depending on how we're feeling. Sometimes yeah. we're feeling really great. And we're like, hey, yeah, it's me. Some days it's like, no, it's it's, yeah. it's not me. Dude. Yeah. I don't know who this <laughs> one guy is, but he sounds like a douche. <laughs> he sounds like a fucking asshole. Right, let's see how I'm going to do this. Put this back up here, put this right down, boom, 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 fly by. Oh, dude, I can't, I can't wait to try this brisket. I'm really excited for this. Yeah, brisket. Everything should be done actually right on time, hopefully. And hopefully next time, 
you because I we had planned to me bring our to cook our chiles. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And so hopefully next time, if Nate has me on on a second time, we'll we will for sure do our chiles next time, and him and I will prepare our chiles. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Well, just ruin that fucking fat. Do you uh do you save your fat? Uh, or do you even cook at home? I cook at home time to time. As of recently, I've been I haven't been home as much, mm. and it, it sucks, you know. But yeah. At the same time, uh, when I am home, uh, the wife cooks for me when I'm tired. I I appreciate that a lot. Um, she but, good. Oh yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Good live roast. <laughs> uh, it wasn't a lie. So. <laughs> it wasn't a lie. I love you, baby. Because <laughs> I know she's gonna watch this shit. <laughs> fuck did you say motherfucker what you saying exactly yeah, but, <laughs> but yeah i mean when i get a chance to cook which is about now i mean before when she started cooking i would cook every day non-stop mm. but now that I, like i said i'm not home that much anymore uh so when i am home she cooks for me and when i do have periods of time off i will cook for the family so i i love cooking but mm. I, I'm very slim on what I cook because, you know, I'm not the best cook ever. i really picky. I love cooking spaghetti. I mean, I don't, obviously, I, I'm a canned, canned sauce guy. Mm. Um, but one thing is I do love cooking handmade or like, I mean, the easiest things like tortillas and stuff like that. I mean, my grandma taught me how to cook. I just never really kept up with it. Uh, I can make tamales by hand. Uh, pozole, I love cooking pozole. I've only done it once though. Um, yeah, I love curing salmon. You ever tried curing? I'm pretty sure you cured salmon. I've cured salmon before. Yeah, it, you know, it's a little, little simple things. I like cooking simple meals. I never like to really take certain amount of time cooking shit. Because I feel like by the time I cook one thing and I got to get into these other things, that shit's going to be cold and, you know, I can only work so fast in the kitchen. I used to work in a cafe though no shit what yes i i started off as a dishwasher and i was like i did dishwashing at that place for about a year and i was like hey look i want to be paid more and i want to be brought up to the front i want to you know i want to prep things and they're like okay well you're gonna start curing the salmon and that's how i learned how to cure salmon um it was a place called the shop cafe in santa barbara i may know it um so i did that i would do the salads i would do like all the toast um the egg benedicts i would do stuff little things like that and yeah i i forgot how to do hollandaise sauce it, dude it's, it's just a video away it, the, the, just, 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 just. i know it's just like a few simple ingredients i just you know i haven't worked in a food establishment yeah. well actually no i did my buddy he owns a taco stand in oxnard and he, he i was actually fairly grateful that he had me Come work with them for a day and i was i always told myself i would never step foot into a food establishment ever again because you know it gets tiring after a while it's so tiring and especially when someone's on your fucking neck oh dude that smells so fucking good. good especially when you have someone breathing down your neck wanting things so fucking great yeah it, it you know it puts a lot of stress on you so that's why i always told myself yeah never again uh but when i did this taco stand the other day oh dude it was the best fucking eight hours of my life since i do step Oh, sorry, this since I stepped foot into a food establishment, it was a trailer too, so it was a lot more funner. There was only one me, so it made everything a lot easier on me and the guys. So you know, if there's something to be said, dude, about um, when you go into a restaurant or like a kitchen, it's like especially when we do the job we do. You go in. There's a list of what you do. You nail it out. You can do this as fast as you can, and that's what you have to do. Mm -hmm. But when you go to our job, it's so, there's so many variables that there's unknown, you know? You don't know if today's gonna go good. You can hope it will, mm -hmm. but you don't know how the girl's gonna be, you don't know how the director's gonna be, you don't know what the script is, you don't know what the, how your dick's gonna do. And so going to a kitchen and being like, that's it. That's what I have to do. It's, there's something really nice, especially when you do this job first and going back to that, it's like, oh. Yeah. Have you, have you looked into, or have you thought about what your future after going is? Ah, yes, actually. So I am currently in the process of leaving California. I want to get my federal firearms license in Nevada. And I want to start um, distributing, manufacturing and transferring firearms. So that's my next step in life. But then I also want to start training and getting into fights in Muay Thai. Because I, like I said, I fell in love 
first day and doing Muay Thai. My brother brought me into it and I was just like, dude, I gotta keep doing this shit. So those are my two main focuses when I leave California is FFL and SOT and just training. I, I will still be doing adult work at the same time, but it, you know, it's just time for me to figure out what is my next step because I'm still young and I'm not gonna be in the industry forever. Maybe one day I wanna be behind the camera and still do the other two options I still have, you know? And yeah, that's where I stand. Nice. And yeah, I mean, I just always had a passion for firearms. Yeah. So, you know. We got yelled at on the plane last time for talking. Yep. <laughs> Me and him were like, as the plane's going off, we're just talking about, oh, this gun and this gun and this gun and this gun. <laughs> and to the, one of our uh, co stars, like, shut up, guys. You're talking about guns on a plane. I'm like, it's not like we're talking about bombs, you know? It's not like we're like, oh, C4. <laughs> so, we got in trouble. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I grew up around guns. I shot my first gun at five years old. And, you know, I kind of want to do the same for my kid. Because yeah. if you teach a kid at a young age, you're not going to be curious in the long run to like, hey, what's that do, you know? And they're not going to hurt themselves. They're going to be like, hey, I can only handle this like this in this environment in this area i'm not gonna i'm not gonna touch it at home you know and i feel like that's where a lot of gun owners go wrong is that they don't teach their kids valuable things about guns and the dangerous things about guns what could happen if a gun goes off where how far does that bullet travel where does it go and you know can it go through walls can it not go through walls you know you know i heard a really good example of it if everyone thought about guns like a knife yeah because here's the thing we all know knives are sharp. We've all cut ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. This has happened more than all. So we know what's going on with this. We don't all know what a bullet feels like. Mm -hmm. We haven't all been shot. So if everyone went to a gun range and you got shot in the leg, you would be a lot safer with that gun, just like you would be with a fucking knife. Yeah, because yeah. guns don't kill people. Dumb people with guns kill yeah. people. Bullets do. Yeah. Horses kill people. That's the real thing. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Because, I mean, you could sit there and talk shit to your gun. It's not going to shoot you. <laughs> so, how do you, how, so you pretty much enjoyed this whole experience of being in this job, huh? Uh, so far, yes. I, I mean, like I said, my good days really outweigh my bad days. And I'm sure it's the same for you. It's, uh, the, uh, mm, sometimes. It depends on how much I've been working. <laughs> because I find that there's, there's some days where I'm like, yeah, this job's dope. This is great. I, I very much love it. But I always find that if I have like four, like those good days, those white pony days, that heroin junkie, I'm going after it. I know I'm about to have a month of fucking rough ones. You know, like every girl is a fucking starfish. The pillow princess. Yeah, the pillow princesses. They don't want to do nothing. And I'm just like, fuck. Um, so let's see how this I love it. So let's see how I'm gonna fucking. What do you guys think? All in one tray, or a plated up? Wait, are we gonna mukbang this thing out? We don't have to. We don't I'm, like. I'm, no, I'm down. Like... All right, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut up the brisket. I'm gonna stick it all in the tray, make it look all fancy, so we can talk for a little bit longer. Yeah, I've never done a mukbang, so <laughs> we're gonna watch us get fat. Oh yeah. Oh, this is... Because it's so thin, I was a little worried that it might be a little dry. Oh, I'm not worried about whatsoever, dude. I'm smell, leaving you. Smell that. Oh, you want to get move this over there for another better angle? Okay, lines there. Cross over here. Oh fuck, you guys, that shit looks so good. I'm pretty sure it looks a lot better in person than it does on camera, but I'm pretty sure it looks really great on camera as well. There's no fucking smoke line upsetting about that. Let's go deeper. Before we get into eating, does anybody else have any questions no. for us? Mm, here we go. 
for that. Yeah, everyone said all in one tray. Like a, like a barbecue restaurant. It's a little oh, dry so that I good. want to be, man. It's still good, though. Mm. Yeah, that's what I was worried about because it's such a thin piece of meat. We're going to have to get all that juice out of it. But we'll do, guys. Well, overall, brisket's a little tricky to cook, too, you know? Also, it's the first time I use that thing for brisket. Oh, really? Yeah. But overall, it's still it's still not bad. It's really good. Brisket. Mm. So, yeah. are you planning to live... Um, so, you want to move to Vegas? Is that the thing? Yeah. Yeah. Do you like Vegas? Oh, dude, I love Vegas. Honestly, in my opinion... I feel a lot more comfortable in Vegas, even though it's a really small town. Mm -hmm. Everything's so much affordable. There's no bullshit going on. Other like all the bullshit happens on the strip or a little bit around the strip. But like the outskirts of Las Vegas, it, it's so good because it's a burnt in. Let's see how it is. Yeah. Oh, it's so a little dry, man. I'm not happy with that. I am. Right, so we've got we've got two questions here. Justin wants to know. Were you active growing up? Did you play any sports or anything? Mm. So, I played uh, youth football when I was seven, eight years old. And I never really continued after that because my dad always had a busy schedule. Couldn't really take me to games or anything like that. And my mom was never really in the picture, so I didn't really have anybody else to take me to games. Right. But in high school, I played football freshman, sophomore, and junior year. And... Hmm, I mean, everyone was just, everyone was cool, I guess. But we did have a few assholes on the team. As everybody else does on the team, they have those fucking jock assholes. Mm. But, yeah, I mean, I never really played anything else other than football. So, I feel like me getting into, like, Muay Thai, it'll, it'll make me feel a lot better about myself. Because when I was playing football, you know, I was always staying active, running, going to the gym and stuff. But... You know, ever since in between that time, I never really kept up with my body, especially when I got into porn. I fucking eat McDonald's, Burger King, In N Out, Fat Burger, and all that crap after saying it's really all not that healthy until I started getting into my own place at home and cooking at home. And yeah. Another question was Dude, this is so burning in my hands. <laughs> How do you wind down after a scene? Like, what do you like to do after you're done with work? Mmm. What I like to do is go home and relax. That's all I really like to do. I don't really like to, I'm not really a party guy. I mean, when like events like AVNs happen, you know, we'll go out and have a few drinks, but I'm not really much of like a wind down, have a beer or stuff like that. I like to just sit at home, play video games, hang out with the fam and smoke weed. That's my definition of winding down. Let's put that on the thing right there. Let's see how this works. I'm gonna give it a concept. We're trying a thing. Can you yeah, put that right there? Oh no, that's on that side. There we go. Is it gonna spin? Cause it's so it's, large, it's, it's not gonna spin. So it's kind of a. <laughs> I can't wait to fuck that shit up, dude. <laughs> I brought the Bayberries up because it's just a little more dry than I want to be. Like, and it doesn't have the smoke rings. I'm a little upset with that. But that's, I, it's just as a flatter piece. Like, I did, like, I should have put that into the calculations. Probably need to get his fork, though. Hmm? Probably need to get forks. Do you have some in here? Yeah, they're back, they're back over there. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, just get a couple panning shots, man. Make it look good. Make sure puddles is Eat it. Puddles, <laughs> don't fucking do it. <laughs> I see your dumb face. Puddles, don't. Don't. Fucking do it. Don't, don't, don't. I'm watching you, dick. Hey, I wish my dog had that sense of mind. Like, when I talk to her, I'm like, don't you uh, fucking do it. <laughs> Sometimes you always just gotta give them that look, and they just yeah. like, Okay, you know, you give me that look, I won't uh, do it. I love you. I do. No. Alright, okay, good. Justin, enough to work with there, Justin. Jump, jump, jump. Uh, 
It's mukbang. Fuck yes. So, here, try everything. Oh, dude, this is with some forks. Thank you. I like the black. Mmm. Oh, they're so good. Mmm. These carrots are so good. Mmm. Try the potatoes. Mm. Oh fuck! Yeah, potatoes, are fucking bomb. Mmm, corn, fucking corn. Yesterday I had sex with mashed potatoes. Mm. Not today I'm eating mashed potatoes. Mm. I, I sure just will. Hope they're not the same mashed potatoes. <laughs> no promises. Mm. No, yesterday they were instant potatoes. They weren't homemade. Uh, they asked, uh, "Have you picked up any bad habits from eating corn?" Bad habits? I come a lot. Um, I don't want to say I picked up bad habits. I mean, at the time, I was not the best boyfriend. Let's just say that. <laughs> but, I mean, overall, I mean, I didn't date anybody for, like... When I got in history, I was single for, like, like five years. Mm -hmm. And then, like, a year after that, that's when I met the wife. And then, you know, kind of popped off after mm -hmm. that. So, I was still... As some people consider a dog. <laughs> well, we're poor. We're all dogs. Yeah, I mean, it's part of the job, but there's a difference between on set and at home. What happens on set, it's work. Yeah. What happens at home is at home. So when you're doing it outside of work, it's a whole, it's a whole different story, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, mm. but yeah, I, I guess you can say I've been caught slipping in the past. So I don't that's... I don't think there's anyone who's been in this job who hasn't been caught slipping. Dude. It's like you you're put in a spot where you get all the pussy, and if you say no to ninety percent of that, you're still doing better than most people would. You know, yeah. so it's like you know, feeling very well. Hmm. Try with some bar barbecue sauce, man. A brisket? Yeah, brisket. Put a little barbecue sauce on. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, all right, guys. Why don't you tell them where they can find you? And so we can tell them to fuck off and eat the food. I don't have Instagram. So for everyone seeing me on Instagram under my stage name, it is 100% not me. Mm. So if you're giving money into anybody, you're fucking up. And you can only find me on Twitter at Loco underscore. One underscore only because there's another account that has two underscores that people get mixed up with. Um, another way you can find my account and knowing it's me is I do not have a header on my account. Everyone else has a header. Huh. So yeah, you can find me on Twitter. That's the only place you will be able to find me. Uh, other than that, I'm not on any other social media platforms. So. All right. Well, guys, thanks for coming into another episode of Hanging with Nathan, where the food is dry and the conversations are slutty. <laughs> if you enjoyed this, like, subscribe, buy my merch. Uh, but come in next week because, or whenever the next episode is, I can't tell you because I don't know. Enjoy yourself. Bye. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. Turn the cameras off. I don't want to talk to these people no more.